we're good now. So uh, again, welcome to the webinar, getting started with cake mill in five steps. This is a brief presentation just to show you guys how to get started, how to create a campaign, how to upload your contacts to the platform and uh, a few other features that we have available for you. And uh, at the end of the presentation, there will be a 15 minutes uh, Q&A session where you guys can uh, get your answers for any questions you may have. So just send them my way via the message chat here in the presentation, and uh, I'll be more than happy to answer them. And if for some reason I am not able to answer them today, please be assured that uh, I will send you the, the answers later on via an email, or uh, I can even reach out to you uh, via a phone call, and I'll be more than happy to, to assist. So let's get started with the presentation. Uh, this is me. My name is Fabrizio Bernal. I'll be your host today. And I am the product expert at CakeMail. Uh, this is an email marketing um, platform that uh, you can use to send out campaigns, to see the stats of your campaigns, and use all those tools to better plan your future campaign strategies. So uh, this is a brief presentation specifically to show you how to get started. This is my email address, fabricio at cakemail.com. You can uh, send me any messages you may have. You can uh, send me any questions, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. So uh, without further ado, please allow me just to show you the, the website. Just a moment while I prepare that for you. Perfect. So here's our website. Um, to start, I just wanted to show you for those who haven't yet opened an account. It's very simple. You simply click on sign up, and this will take you to the sign up page. I know this is something a lot of our clients already have access to and have already done, but uh, for those who haven't, it's very easy, just enter your email address and your password. Uh, please remember that uh, passwords have to be uh, uh, specifically, they will need to have one uh, capital letter, a uh, special character and numbers as well in order to be properly secured. Otherwise, uh, it's very easy to get hacked nowadays. So just make sure to enter a proper password when creating your account. So I have already created an account for this specific exercise. So let's just go ahead and enter the information and credentials, and I'll sign in. Perfect. So this is the account I have created. It's basically just a fake company I have created for the exercise. It's called Tune Twisters. It's basically just a company that sells recycled uh, musical instruments. Obviously, it's not real, so uh, it's just so to show you how the platform works. So the very first thing you will see on the dashboard is the Get Started menu here on the right. So this is just a few steps that we have uh, taken the, the time to create for you so that you can complete them and uh, you can then properly get started and you don't miss any of the features available at the start. So I have already created an, uh, an email, so this is already checked. But uh, there are other things here too, like adding contacts, creating a segment, authenticating the domain, which is also something very important that I will briefly show you. And then there's the schedule and send an email. So the first thing you will do, of course, is uh, check out your uh, company profile. So click on the top right part of the screen. And here you'll see all the account information, how many subscribers you have, how many emails you have sent during the month, and then there's the option to upgrade your plan if you have uh, more contacts now than before, or you can even downgrade it in case that's something you would like. So let's take a look at the account profile. As I mentioned earlier, this is my fake uh, company, but obviously here you, it's important to add real information. Uh, uh, I, you can then add the organization name. It's uh, by default, it's set to your email address. So make sure to enter the proper company name so that we can identify you within our systems. Then that's it, the, uh, the physical address, which is also something that is now required when sending out campaigns. 
Obviously, this is also not real, and uh, but you can enter the, the real physical address information here, the phone number, which is also something we recommend. And lastly, the, the website information, if you could add that, that is also something that uh, can be very useful for us to identify your company within our system. And uh, it also adds a lot of information that uh, you can add to the profile. So uh, another thing here is you can add your logo. This is really cool because you can add your own logo, either a JPEG, a PNG, or a GIF. And then this logo will appear on your forms when, when you create a subscription form to gather new contacts. Uh, this logo will appear on the top part to properly brand this subscription form. So let's just go ahead and do that for you. I'll upload a, an image from my photos. Uh, I created a logo for this company. And there, that's it. You can then save it. And this, this logo will appear within your forms. Next, we'll see the users. So by default, there's only one user, the one that was uh, created when when you have entered the information for your account but then you can also add uh, new users if you have a growth or a premium plan and uh, it's very easy just add invite them via an email and then you can then uh, they can uh, access the account by accepting your invitation and you can have more than one user for the account next we'll see the senders this is important of course this is the email address your recipients will see whenever uh, they receive any of your campaigns, your communications, your emails. So it's very important to be properly identified with your brand and to have your own domain. There are people who will use gmail.com or uh, yahoo.com, any of those free email services to send out mass email campaigns. But this is, of course, not a good idea. And uh, if you do that, it's most more than likely you will be and sent to the spam folder since it would be viewed as if you were impersonating those uh, email services. So it's important to have your own domain. And then when you have that, you can add it here and uh, you can verify that it is properly authenticated. Authentication basically means that uh, the domain will be um, properly optimized to make sure that uh, they reach the recipient email services will see it as being authenticated. So they will more than likely accept it as such. And uh, you can verify the authentication procedure here by clicking on authenticate domain. So just click on it. And then there's a few instructions here that you can uh, follow to properly uh, authenticate your domain. And uh, you can also reach out, reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to help you with this procedure. Just make sure to to take a, a moment to, to properly follow this, since it's very important for your overall deliverability. So when this is done, you can also take a look at your suppression list. This is just a list of emails that you can add here if you want to block them from future campaigns, in case you want to block a certain emails that have unsubscribed, uh, you have the option to do it here. So now that we've looked at the accounts, uh, settings. You can also now go back to the dashboard. And uh, the very first thing you will do when creating an account is more than likely you want to upload your list, the one you have already gathered. So it's very easy to do. Just click on the contacts tab on the top part of the screen. And from here, uh, you'll see the different uh, contact lists that you have. Obviously, this is a new account, so we don't have any, but uh, we have an option to upload your contacts by clicking in import contacts. You can then import them all at once or add them one by one. So there's either the option to do it via a CSV file where you can copy paste them from a spreadsheet. For this exercise, for this webinar, I'll show you how to do it with a CSV file so you can import all of them at once. So I'll just go ahead and click on browse for a file to upload. And then I had one prepared for this, my contact list, and I'll open it. So now it is preparing the preview for your import. The very first thing you will see here are a few columns. Make sure to always properly choose the email column 
and identify it as, as such. So click email and identify it. And these are your emails, the ones you will be importing. Then the, there's other columns that I have, I have added. These are basically custom columns that uh, you can add if you have gathered different information from your clients. And this is very cool because you can use this information to create segments within your list. And uh, for future campaigns and strategies you may have, it can be very uh, useful to target your campaigns to different age groups. For example, in this case, I have added that information, or you can also uh, target them from for the different uh, departments. So by creating uh, more targeted campaigns, um, you're more than likely to have better outreach uh, stats and better you know, results for your objectives. So uh, make sure to you know, add as much information as you can, and then you click on continue. And uh, by the way, you can also add a new column here if you wanna gather uh, more information later on with the form that you will create here within our platform. So let's click continue to go ahead and um, upload the list. This is of course, make sure you always confirm that you have full permission to send out campaigns to this list. Click on continue. And we are now importing the, the list. It may take a few moments, but once this is done, uh, we will uh, the, the platform will let you know. And also if there are any issues within the, the formatting, of the campaign, like perhaps there are a few, uh, there there were a few special characters or some spaces that are found within the contacts. We will let you know where in which specific line the error is found. So you can go ahead and take a look and uh, rectify that situation. So now that this is done, you can either add more contacts or just uh, uh, clarify that you are done adding contacts. So let's do that. Perfect, so there's your list. Uh, it's all there, all, all the email addresses, the date when they were added, their status, by default, they'll be active. However, if for some reason, one of these addresses are invalid in the sense that they don't actually exist, uh, we, they will hard bounce on during a campaign and the status will be changed to inactive and then they will be blocked from future campaigns. This is done automatically by our system. So this is also a cool feature to have, and uh, they will be shown here as inactive, so you can uh, identify them as such. And then there's the age group. This is the custom column or attribute that I have added. It can be used to create segments, and likewise for the department the column I have created. So uh, I mentioned creating segments, so let me show you how that's done. So simply click on create segment here, and from uh, this menu, you can name your segment. It can be anything you like, really. Uh, and then uh, let's see here. So the unnamed segment for now, this will be Tune Twisters segment. And you choose your mailing list. It's the one called mailing, my mailing list by default. And you can choose a condition. So this is the fun part here. It can be very uh, cool to create your own segments for future campaigns. So let's see the age group. Let's choose age group is 25 to 35 years. So there are four contacts that match this condition. You can create this, this uh, segment, calling it 25. 5 to 35 age group. And just like that, you have your new segment that you can use to send out a campaign to this specific age group. You can create that campaign specifically tailored for that age group or any other uh, different columns that you may have. This can be really fun and really great, really, uh, to send out a proper, more targeted campaign. So th that's for the contact list. So the next part is if you wanna um, import new contacts or gather rather uh, new contacts to this list, you can create a form within our platform. So earlier I mentioned that it's important to add your own logo. And now this is why, because you can, when you create a campaign, I mean a form, you can then uh, 
add your own logo at the top here and the, they'll be able to see that see it uh, this is the name of my campaign i mean my form and then you choose your your contact list click on continue that's it and uh, make sure to choose the proper opt-in policy so whenever your subscribers will um, of course enter this contact list they can either do it with a double opt-in which is recommended it means when they do it they'll receive an email to confirm that they want to opt in this is the proper way to do it since this avoids email addresses that, that don't exist so make sure to choose that if you can you can also choose not to have an opt-in email but uh, it's recommended that you always send out a confirmation email whenever you gather new recipients so now that this is done you can click on continue and this will automatically create your form if you want to edit the form just click on the three dots here on the top right then you can edit this uh, newly created form so see this is the logo for the company there's the email address where the subscribers can enter their email of course and then the subscribe then they'll receive a confirmation on their emails the inbox and then they'll be able to properly access the contact lists and future campaigns that you send out to this list then you can get the url here on or you can also edit the form if you want to add a new custom attribute so i had already added those attributes uh, i added the, the age group or the department so you can do that here let's see department for example and then the, the label will be changed to department and this is done you can click save and when new subscribers join the list they can enter that information as well for you so you can create segments in the future so if you use all of those tools you're more than likely to get better results since you will have more information and the more information you have the more segments you can create and the more targeted campaigns that you can create so now that this is done you can click save and your form is now updated with the new field uh, another thing i wanted to mention and just a tip recommendation on my part just make sure not to include too much uh, information here i mean not too many fields otherwise your recipients might feel overwhelmed and uh, which might be counterproductive just make sure to include the information that uh, you know the most import important essential information and that will be a good point to start the form uh, you can also get the form via the embedded form if you want to add this to a website or a social media channel you can do it here you can get the code it's all here you can copy it and add it to your website if this is something that you would like to do and it, it will be integrated directly into the website with your logo and all the fields so perfect now you have your contact list you have your form so now you, now you have a way to gather more contacts and uh, the next thing to do would be of course to create your campaign so uh, we can click on the campaigns tab and uh, we can see if you had sent out a campaign you will be able to see the stats here here you'll be able to see who has clicked on the campaign you can see who has opened the campaign and uh, later on that information can also be used to create segments based on the people who have clicked on the campaign on the pe people who have opened or even you can even see the people who have clicked on a specific link link within the campaign so for example you have the uh, people who have not clicked on the link that you wanted to send them or present them you can uh, then create a segment based on the people who have not clicked on that link and uh, use it to send out a reminder campaign or any follow-up really to that list, uh, to that segment, to get perhaps better results or try another approach. So that also can be useful to create segments. So let's create a, a campaign. So the process is very simple. You just click on the plus sign on the right part, and this will take you to the starting point menu. The, the very first step is the professional templates. There are a lot, a lot of options here available. You can filter by usage, by industry, by season. This means the holidays. And of course, 
There are two editors. The one that we will show you is the email designer, which is, in my opinion, the best editor since it's very easy to use and it has a lot of options. So the, there are a lot of uh, professional templates. These are pre-built. They have been tested. They are professional templates in, in the sense that they will be responsive within uh, all the email services like Gmail, Outlook, uh, any of those, uh, the most popular uh, email services. So you can uh, select them and then you can change the logo and add your own, add your own messages, add your own photos, depending on your industries. And uh, this is of course a great way to save time in the sense that you, you won't have to create the whole structure or, or, or the image, the background images. So there are a lot of options for you here. And if you have one template that you have liked and you've saved it, it will be found within the My, My Templates tab for your future use. Uh, the Send Campaigns tab will show all the campaigns that you have sent out. And uh, you can choose the, a template that you have already used when sending out a campaign. The Calendar tab will show you all the, the next, uh, upcoming holidays like the Super Bowl, Valentine's Day, anything really that's coming up within um, the holiday seasons. And you can view the templates from here. And then there's the start from scratch option, which is the one we will use for this presentation. You can either start with the essentials. This will create a structure with a few uh, photos by default that you can change. You can add your own logo. It's the same principle as the professional templates. It's just that we have a more of a basic professional template for you. And this is also a validated template in the sense that uh, it will be responsive within all the email uh, recipients. Then there's the smart start with a blank canvas option. If you want to start from scratch completely with a white canvas, this is the way to do it. And if you have your own code, let's say there's an HTML code that you have created or an, a CSS code, you can also choose the option here and you can uh, import it, you just copy paste it and uh, it will be shown within this tool. And uh, you can even edit that with the HTML editor, which is a different editor than the one that I will show you. But uh, in case you are more familiar with the creation of HTML code or CSS, this is the option for you. Now for, for the presentation, I want to show you briefly the email designer we have here are the main tool we use to create campaigns. So let's start with the blank canvas. This will open the email designer I have mentioned. And uh, as you can see, it's very simple. It's uh, basically, you can just drag and drop the structure of your email, and then you can drag the contents, a title, for example, you can add on your own images or a button, whatever you like. All the options are available here. And um, that's pretty much it. And uh, also uh, to go more in depth with, for, for this specific email designer, we will have a, in a webinar next month and on March with all the information that will go more in depth, uh, more in detail so that uh, you don't miss anything. But this requires a lot of time. So that's why we have opted to in the, in instead address this in a new webinar. So now that this is done, let's say you have created your campaign you can either save it or you can send yourself a test email. It's important whenever you uh, make a change to always send yourself a test and to make sure that everything is working properly. And then you can click on continue. This will take you to the last step of the campaign creation process. Here's where you choose your mailing list. And if you have a segment, you can also send only to that specific segment, like the one I have created earlier. You can add your own uh, sender name and choose the sender email address. Make sure that it's properly authenticated, like I mentioned earlier. You can add your subject line. There are a few best practices that we recommend. Try not to use more than nine words. If you have an emoji, please don't add more than one, if possible, and uh, avoid using more than 60 characters. And uh, you, you, you don't want to use more than uh, three punctuation marks in order to not to appear too spammy, you know, like uh, if you add a subject line with all capital letters, uh, too many emojis and a lot of, of uh, punctuation marks, it more than likely you will be ignored or even you will be sent directly to the spam folder. So make sure to follow this, these recommendations 
and uh, try to test as much as possible uh, with the subject lines and to see what works and what doesn't work for your future future campaigns. Uh, that's the main thing about the email marketing. It, it lets you experiment a lot and it lets you test what works. And uh, this, can, this information can be very useful for your future campaigns. Uh, there's uh, a few other um, tips that we have for you to boost the performance. So uh, the, the main one is, of course, to authenticate your sended domain with CakeMail, like I mentioned earlier. Make sure to take a look. This will take you to a to our knowledge base. Um, I want to take the opportunity again to, to invite you to take a look at the knowledge base from the cakemail.com website. We have a lot of articles there to show you on more in detail all the features that I have shown you today. There will be uh, guides, step-by-step -step guides. There's even a few videos for you. And uh, it can be a great starting point as well if you want to create a form or even if you want to create automations. We have a whole is a um, whole um, area there for you where you can uh, see how to automate your welcome emails and create uh, looping emails and many other great features are there for you. And uh, you can also uh, then schedule uh, a campaign for a future date, or you can uh, send yourself a test email, or you can send your campaign as soon as possible. And that's it. You've created your campaign. Make sure that everything is correct before uh, sending the campaign to all the, the recipients. And the, the results will be then found within the sent campaign style. It will all be there. Your, your click rate, your open rate, the people who have unsubscribed, and also the addresses that have hard bounced. And if there's anything you, you, you want to gather within the, this report, you can export it the contact activity to see who has opened or who has not opened the campaign. And um, that's pretty much it for, for our cake mail uh, platform. This is, was just a, a brief presentation to show you how it, how it works. And now we'll take the time to, to answer a few questions that you guys may have in, in response to, to this presentation. And um, we'll, this presentation will also be available in publicly uh, on our um, knowledge base and also our YouTube channel. And we'll be also sending this via an email to all the people who have uh, reached us today and all the people who have subscribed and have opted to join us on the presentation. So let me just a moment. To see who has sent us a question. Okay, it seems we don't have actually any. Okay, yeah, we do have a question, sorry. Just a moment. Uh, so uh, the one question we have is, are some contents mandatory when you send an email? I know about the unsubscribe link, are there others? Well, yes, of course, uh, there is another um, mandatory uh, content, which, which would be the physical address. Now, I mentioned earlier that uh, it's very, very important to enter the, your physical address when creating the account. And the reason for this is the can spam, anti-spam anti law requires us to enter this information whenever you send out a, a campaign to many recipients. Otherwise, it would be illegal to send uh, mass emailings. This is why it's very important to include both the unsubscribe link and also to include the physical address. Now, some people uh, may prefer not to disclose this information. They don't because they operate their businesses from home and they don't want people to have that information. So what uh, we recommend in those cases is to create a PO box address and associate it with your with your company. And this gives your company a, a much better, you know, image since it's shown as a transparent company. And uh, if somebody wants to reach out via a physical uh, mailing, the, this can be done and they, be, they will be able to find the information within your uh, campaign. Now, uh, let's see what, what are the other questions we have. The, yeah, there's one person who has asked, 
Can I send an email if I only have a Gmail address? I mean, yes, you can definitely send it. However, it would be very bad for, for your you know, image, for your company image, since it's not very professional to send out a company email from a Gmail address instead of you know, using this, your, your company as the domain. So make sure to, you, to use your own owned domain and uh, make sure to authenticate it. This will be the, the best way to send out mass campaignings. And it will also make sure to uh, reach the inbox rather than being sent to the spam folder. So those are the, the, all the questions we have. If you have any other questions, um, yeah, there's one people who has asked who to help them with their authentication. But yes, it can be a bit complicated, I know. And uh, if that's the, the case, we can assist you with this. Please make sure to reach out to us. And this takes me to the last uh, screen. Uh, I wanted to thank you so much uh, for being here. We have a small group who joined us today, a very small group, but uh, I was very happy to show you guys you know, a brief presentation. Perhaps I was also able to share a few tips or, or recommendations. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your time. And this presentation will also be available within our social um, uh, channels. And also this will be sent via an email. If you have questions, reach out to us via the email address we have here on file, support at cakemail.com. We'll be more than happy to assist you with the authentication procedure. We'll be able to assist you with any comments or any uh, requests you may have. So just uh, reach out to us. And um, this takes us to the end of our presentation. Thank you so much. I will now end the, the recording. Um, again, um, if you have uh, comments or feedback, that will also be appreciated. Thank you and uh, have a great day.